Good morning. My name is Gina Zablois, and on behalf of the gala committee, we are very excited to announce that after five years, we are bringing back a gala to St. Angela Marisi. Our gala committee has been working hard over several months to make this a beautiful, fun, and special evening for everyone. At St. Angela Marisi, we firmly believe in the power of unity and community and would love to see our school family and parish family come together for this event. The gala will take place on Saturday, May 11th at 7 p.m. in the gym. We are hoping that by having it on campus allows for more of our parishioners and community members to attend. The theme will be a night on the red carpet, and it is a semi-formal event that will include a live band performance by LA Spice, a full open bar, a variety of delicious food options, as well as a live and silent auction. You can purchase tickets or donate to our gala by scanning the QR code in the church bulletin. I will be outside the conference room today immediately following mass if you would like assistance purchasing your tickets. We're thankful for your participation in bringing our school and church community together and are looking forward to an unforgettable evening of unity, joy, and celebration. Thank you. Good morning and welcome. We are glad you're with us today as we gather as one for the holy sacrifice of the Mass on the third Sunday of Easter. If you are new to St. Angela and would like to become a parishioner, registration forms are on the tables in the church hallways. Sama will meet on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. in the gym. All men of the parish are invited. Guest speaker will be Coach Elliot James. Please note that the meeting is on Tuesday instead of Thursday this month. On Wednesday, confessions will be available from 5 to 7 p.m. with adoration from 6 to 7 p.m. Venmo is now available as an option for your weekly offering. See the back of the hymnal for the QR Next weekend on Good Shepherd Sunday, the second collection will be for the retired priests of our archdiocese. Our altar servers will meet in the parish center library at 7 p.m. next Sunday, April 21st. The intentions for today's mass is for the Burke and the Delate families. Our celebrant today is Father Bo, assisted by Deacon Nick. We begin our prayer now as we stand and sing number 780, Sing a new song, number 780. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. Amen. All right, we come before our Lord this beautiful day. Look into our hearts, acknowledging our sins. We ask God for pardon. We ask God for the peace that only He can provide. <clears throat> 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the heart. And on earth, peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing on the, of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can we have a seat? We have child church this morning? I think we do, yes. All right, all of our kids, come on out. Like ants to a picnic, here we go. You got it. Okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. You keep on coming. This is good. Eloise coming too. All right. Heavenly Father, we ask for you to, special, to especially bless our kids in a beautiful way today. May they learn more and more about you. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Go right back there, guys. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Got it. Doing good. Doing good. Got it. Okay. Perfect. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. 
The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead, and of this we are witnesses. No, now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouths of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Let your face shine on us, Lord, let your face shine on us, Lord, let your face shine on us, Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O oh my just God. on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let, let your face shine on us. Lord, let, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let let your, your face shine on us, Lord, let, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us, you put gladness into my heart. Lord, let, let your face shine on us, Lord, let, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Lord Jesus, open up the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had, had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? To rise in your hearts. Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right. We just heard it right here. Check this out. Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance, meaning a conversion and a change, that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Repentance being preached. Book of Acts, St. Peter in boldness stands up and says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your, sin your sins may be wiped away. St. Peter fulfilling the very thing that Jesus talked about. He prophesied it, and there's Peter doing it, period. I want to march back to look at something in, that happened in 1917, something beautiful, something amazing. I touched on part of this last week as I talked about the solar eclipse, and I want to come back to it and hit on new developments that have happened since the eclipse on Monday. For those who are not here on last Sunday, you're going to learn something. It's amazing what God is doing right now, and the time that we're in is a graced period, a very graced time, and we've got to pay attention to what is happening right now. Let's jump back to Fatima. 1917, we're in the middle of World War I. It's not a good time. The world is, is under siege. Siege, we're, we're, we're battling each other. And in the middle of this, in Fatima, Portugal, in a very poor and simple area, God allows the Blessed Mother to appear to these three children. And it starts on May 13th of 2017. And the message is very simply this. Repent, come back, pray the rosary. The Blessed Mother appearing as a good mother does to her kids. Look at the entire world, meaning all of us, not only those who were alive at that point, but for those who would come, and that's us. And the Blessed Mother is asking for repentance, for us to come back to God, to pray the rosary every single day, to lift up and pray for conversion of the world. And if this would not happen, that a second war would happen. A second war would happen. Did we follow, generally speaking, as a world? No. Did a second war happen? Absolutely. World War II. At the very end of that war, what end of that war? I've talked about this before. Very simply, when it happened, there was a bomb that was dropped 
on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the atomic bomb. And when it hit in Hiroshima, there were four Jesuit priests that were eight blocks down from ground zero. And these four Jesuit priests were doing what the Blessed Mother had asked. What did she ask for? Again, praying the rosary, getting on top of it, converting your hearts. They were doing it. And while the entire area was just blown out, devastated, people evaporated, these four priests lived. And they, were, they suffered no radiation damage. It made absolutely no sense that they would be alive. And when asked afterwards, they said, what were you all doing at 8.05 or 8.15 when the, when the bomb dropped, at 8.15? And they very simply said, we were lifting out the message of Fatima. We attribute our survival to the fact they were living out the message of Fatima. They were blown about the room. They had some glass that hit at the back of one guy's neck. They should not have survived it and should have died from radiation damage. But because they were doing the right thing, they all lived. And again, it's like God was saying, look at this. If you pray the message, if you do this, if you listen to the message and respond, God will protect you. They began on that date to pray a novena, a nine-day rosary. And they encouraged the world to pray a nine-day rosary. And you know what? Nine days later, Japan surrendered. At that point, they said, we quit. We stop. And indeed, you look at it, that happened on August 15th, the Feast of the Assumption, that indeed World War II ended. And why did it end? It ended because of the power of the rosary and the world praying that particular prayer. But did we listen enough? You know, where are we right now? Look at our culture. We are confused. We're in a place where there's a lot of spiritual apathy. I am not talking about you because you're here right now in church. Praise God. Thank you. I'm talking to all of us as a team because as a team, God has got us on a mission to spread this message of repentance and change. And right now, he is desperately trying to get our attention in these very critical times. Very critical times. Now, what happened at the end of these six visions, when the Blessed Mother appeared over six times on the 13th of the month, from May through October of 2017, on the last day, which would be October 13th of 2017, the Blessed Mother, a month before, basically said, have people gather. What was the sign? Very simply this. The sun moved in power on October 13th of 2017. People, there were like 70,000 people gathered out there in this wet, muddy field. And the sun moved, and this was witnessed miles away, in a way that came down to the earth. The sun seemed to plunge down to earth, to the earth, and come back over and over and over again. The Fatima message has been approved by the church because very simply it was so significant and the miracle was so strong. The people got up in this muddy field instead of finding their pants wet from kneeling down because your natural response when you see the sun coming at you is to go down and kneel and go, whoo. They got up and their pants were dry. The, the, the people's dresses were dry. It was nuts, an absolute crazy miracle. All this happens in 2017 with a movement of the sun. 100 years later to the year, on April 21st of 2017, there was a solar eclipse, and that eclipse passed over our whole country. And it went from the northwest down to the southeast. As I said last week, it passed over seven cities named Salem. Seven cities named Salem. And what does Salem mean? Salem comes from shalom, meaning peace. It started in Salem, Oregon, went through Salem, Idaho, I'm down through Salem, Wyoming, Salem, Nebraska. Then went through Salem, Missouri, Salem, Kentucky, and Salem, South Carolina. All these areas, it's like God's saying that number seven is a holy number, a sign of completion. It comes up in the Bible all the time. God painting with a wide brush to the path of totality, hitting seven of the 36 cities named Salem in the U.S., God went, I offer you peace 100 years after the miracle of the sun. And it's a solar eclipse. And what happens in a solar eclipse? You've got the sun here, you've got the moon here, and you've got earth here. Now, in Catholic tradition, who is known, like, who's compared to the moon? The Blessed Mother. Our altar's right over here. Our Lady is compared to the moon. Why? 
because the moon reflects the sun. When you walk out and the, and, the, and the whole night is illuminated by a full moon, it's the sun, like the S-O-N, who is reflected, and Our Lady magnifies the sun like the moon magnifies the, the S-U-N. So in a solar eclipse, what is going on? What is the sign, like, cosmically? The sun, the moon, and us. Who intercedes for us? Who stands between the sun and us but the Blessed Mother? Our Lady stands directly between us and Jesus. And she prays for us like crazy, saying, very simply, Son, bless our people. So this sign, when you see the sign of, the, the sign of Christ himself, as well as Our Lady's intercession, going across the whole country. So again, Salem, 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 Salem. And then it means peace, shalom. God saying, I offer you peace. Like Jesus did today in the gospel, he comes in through the door in the upper room, the apostles are scared, and he comes in, so the first thing he says is peace. I'm not a ghost, I can eat, you know, I'm here. And they had incredulous joy because of that peace. Now, seven years later, after that first eclipse in 2017, an eclipse took place on Monday, exactly seven years apart. And again, this seven-year eclipse, where did it move? It moved very simply across our country again. It started in Texas and moved up this time to the northeast. And if you look at it on a map of the two paths of totality, what you see is a cross, a cross there. Now, the second path of totality that happened on Monday, where did it begin? It began in Jonah, Texas. I didn't realize that last week. Jonah, Texas, and it went through seven areas called Nineveh, okay? Now, the direct path of totality passed through two cities called Nineveh after going to Jonah and went all the way up. Some of them were townships. You look at cities and townships in the U.S., there's a total of six of them within the U.S. And it passed directly over two cities. The other townships were right outside the path of the totality, but in that general path. The seventh place called Nineveh is in Nova Scotia. So it went up and touched a total of seven. Now here's the other kicker. It began again with Jonah going all the way up through Nineveh. What did Jonah call? Jonah called for repentance. God spat him out from the belly of the fish onto the Nineveh shores, and he said, go and speak to the people. Tell them, repent, carry that message right here of the gospel and bring it to the people. Did they turn their hearts? And Jonah said this. He said, 40 days or Nineveh will be destroyed. And the people converted their hearts. They changed. When it hit Jonah, Texas, what time did it hit on Monday? It hit around noon. What time did the solar eclipse complete its path to the U.S.? At 3.09. When Jesus was crucified on Good Friday, what time did it happen? It happened at noon. And it said at the time that Jesus was crucified, darkness covered the earth until 3 p.m. Oof. Think about that. God is giving the sign once again, darkness covered the earth for three hours in the U.S. And what is the message? The message is the message of Jonah. Repent. And he spoke to who? The city called Nineveh. Now, where did it intersect? A place called Little Egypt. If you look at the two paths of totality, it hits Little Egypt. Little Egypt, of course, Egypt is the place of slavery that God called us, his people from the place of slavery being bound, in a sense, by sin, to be freed. And it intersected at those two spots. Also, where did the path of totality pass this time? It happened in Indianapolis. Okay, what is happening in Indianapolis this July? A Eucharistic Congress, meaning God is bringing forth his attention toward the Eucharist. It's going to happen in Indianapolis this July. And the path of totality came right through it. It's like if you look at it as a cross, I'll show you like this, in the country, the first path seven years ago went like this. The second path went up 
like this. And right past the intersection, at the head of the cross, what do you find? You find, very simply, Indianapolis, right there. Now, what happens 40 days after this event on Monday? We just hit, you think about it, last weekend. We had divine mercy on Sunday. God calling for repentance, change, coming back. Then you had the eclipse on Monday, which was what? The Feast of the Annunciation. The Feast of the Annunciation, which should have took place on March 25th, but got pushed because of the Easter season. What happened to the Feast of the Annunciation was very simply this. God said, behold, Mary, you're going to bear a son. It's a miraculous, miraculous movement. And again, we acknowledge that the son passed over everything. 40 days from Monday, what's going on? 40 days from Monday, we had the vigil of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit came down and filled the people with strength and power. What is God asking for in these next 40 days leading up toward Pentecost? He's asking for us to repent and to change. It normally happens during Lent, but if during Lent, if for some reason you did not jump on this bandwagon, this message of what God has given to us, now is the time. Do not be blind. Do not be deaf. Wake up. If there's a part of you that has not followed what Christ himself prophesied and St. Peter talked about directly today, repent and believe. If you have not converted your heart, I'll give you an example. For instance, if you have missed Mass at some point in your life, okay, and have not brought that to reconciliation, you're not in a state of grace if you knowingly did it. To miss Mass knowingly puts you not in a state of grace. And that's only one thing that could possibly be, bring death to the soul. And if you haven't repented of that and you go before God, think about the consequences. What is God asking for? Conversion, change. And if you sit back right now and go, well, what are my sins? I don't know what my sins are. You know, I'm a pretty good guy or gal. Go back and grab one of the, the examination of consciences in the back, the little pamphlet in the back, and pour over it. Because right now, God is speaking to Nineveh, to our come and believe. What are the consequences? Some, some are looking at this whole thing going, well, is, is he going to come again? All I'm going to say is this. We do not know the day nor the hour. He could come again this afternoon. But he wants us to be prepared and not be deaf and not be just be rotting inside the soul. But many of us are rotting, unfortunately, and we're putting it off, saying, you know what? There are two paths I can go by, but I'll always have time to change. Led Zeppelin say we're to heaven. Yes, there are two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. And it's a lie, a bold-faced lie. That there's always time. I can always put this off. What happened in Nineveh? When the people repented, when the country repented, when our parish repents, what does God want to do? He blessed Nineveh. But a lot of it's going to be conditioned on us and our response to God. Not being blind to the sides, but alive and very clear and responsive. So everyone, I'll close with this, with that last message again. Repent, therefore. This is St. Peter speaking. And be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. Amen. And let us stand now and profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the power of the risen Christ, let us bring our needs to God today. Our response is, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For church leaders, may the Lord guide them in caring for the physical and spiritual needs of those they serve. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Lord grant them fortitude in defending the dignity and sanctity of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord is Lord, hear our prayer. Struggling in their faith, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, may the Spirit renew us in the hope of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For Eileen K. Hedrick, William Grush, Carlo Benora, and all who have died, may they rest in eternal peace with the Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Follow the intentions on our parish prayer line and those listed in the book in the rear of church, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For these and all the needs we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and faithful God, through the years, the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prom Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, hasten to help us. Mother Henriette de Leo, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Amen. Be seated. If you'd like to make an offering today, uh, the ushers will be coming around at this time, or you can scan the QR code on the back of the missalette um, with your, your cell phone to make an online donation. We want to thank you for the many ways that you support our mission. Thank you. As our gifts are gathered and presented, we sing number 738, I Has Not Seen. Number 738.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your name. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exalted church. As you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and to eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles,
apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The disciples recognize the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia.
As we come to the Lord's table, we sing number 578, Jesus Christ, Bread of Life, number 578. Jesus Christ, bread of life, fill us with your love. Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, fill us with your peace. Thankfully, here we bring... My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in, your, in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good. I want to say this. The Archdiocese of New Orleans is looking for a few good men. What do I mean by that? Um, we had a deanery meeting where we gathered together uh, a number of the, the parishes in this area, and there is a call right now that God has for the diaconate. And the diaconate, what is the diaconate? It's what Deacon Nick does. He walks, he prays, he serves in so many capacities within the parish itself. And I know <laughs> that God right now is calling some men, even in this church right now, to the greatness of the diaconate life. Um, Greg Lorman right now is in formation. And I know God has more that he's calling here in this parish. If you feel a spark in your heart, and there's a part of you that feels like God may be calling you, I encourage you to come talk to me. As pastor, I'm here to help you discern that. And the Archdiocese right now is getting to walk through a process for guys that will be ordained in 2029. Pray about it. Think about it. If you feel that prompting, please come talk to one of us. We're here to help. Also, Child Church, Amanda just alerted me that there are second graders who are graduating from Child Church, and she has your certificates, and you're in second grade. There are four of them. Come see Amanda in the back of church back here. And also, we have, of course, gala tickets that will be sold outside, or you can use the QR code, as you heard about the gala that Gina talked about so beautifully this morning. So, with all that being said, um, if you want to get the, the message I said today, I know I gave you a lot of information. There's a lot of things converging at one time. It's going to be on YouTube and also Facebook. Just check for the Mass this morning at 9 o'clock. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a blessed day on this beautiful Sunday. You too, Father. Going forth, we sing number 784, All Creatures of Our God and King, number 784. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing.